Have you ever taken your dog to the groomer and asked for a puppy cut? Were you met with a blank stare, a lecture about the non-existence of the puppy cut, or an attitude? If so, you're not alone. In recent years, I have seen a trend among groomers to have a great disdain for the words puppy cut, short but not too short, and the teddy bear trim. Have you ever wondered why? Well, I'm going to break it down for you and help you with some terminology that may help you get the look that you have in mind for your dog. One thing that I have learned is that most pet parents do not know what to ask for when bringing their pets to the groomer. Most people have heard the words puppy cut. It sounds cute. It's easy to ask for. So what could go wrong, right? In my salon, I basically have an idea of what a client is looking for. I understand that the client doesn't have any specifics. They want cute, and I deliver. Many groomers, however, state that the puppy cut is one length all over. Unfortunately, I believe that this interpretation many times gets in the way of style. Creating a puppy look on an adult dog requires skill and style. If you go with one length all over, the dog will not actually have that puppy look. Take, for instance, this doodle. She is about 11 months old, and the pet parent wants her to look a bit more like she did at three months old. This requires layering the coat, fuller neck hair, a level top line, more hair on the front of the legs to create a pillar look, a bit of a fan in front of the eyes, medium length ears, and so on. Groomers, before you scream at me that my images are not puppy trims, stick with me. Because as you all say, this is completely up to interpretation. Some salons have 10 groomers, each with their own style. And since there are no set standards or guidelines for the puppy cut, each groomer does their own thing. This means that you could book an appointment with one groomer at the salon and get a fluffy dog back but the next groomer might shave the dog all over. The reason for this is that some groomers envision a newborn puppy, some an eight-week-old puppy, and others a six-month-old puppy. Many groomers insist that there is only one puppy trim, and that is for a show poodle. Others insist that it is one length all over, usually as short as a newborn puppy. Every groomer has their own style. The same goes for pet parents. Although most pet parents picture in their minds an eight-week-old puppy, others have a completely different interpretation of the puppy cut. Each dog has different characteristics that greatly affect how the groom turns out. Oftentimes, groomers must ask a lot of questions to get the idea of what the client wants. And then, upon evaluating the dog, they must determine if the style will be appropriate for the dog's condition and type. Some dogs are too matted for any style, and there is no option but to shave the coat off and start over. Remember that if the dog must be shaved down, that their skin must be protected from UV rays until it grows back. It is important to remember that you should not ask for a puppy trim, clippered style, or hand scissored style for double coated dogs or primitive coat types such as Pomeranians. Severe or permanent coat damage can be a serious problem for these dogs as a result of trimming. These dogs should be handled with a mindful approach. If this type of dog is severely matted, every effort should be made to protect the coat by gently removing the mats rather than shaving. When asking clients questions, we must first determine the length of coat that the client wants. Many times a client will say they want an inch while showing us two inches with their fingers. Some will open and close the length shown between their fingers, leaving us guessing anywhere from one to three inches. Sometimes pet parents bring photos of puppies who have never had a haircut. While these are cute, they've never been groomed, so the groom will not look the same. We are also shown photos of dogs who look completely different from the client's dog, meaning that the hairstyle in the photo will not work for your dog. Are you confused yet? So are we. 
I want pet parents to have the best possible experience when taking their pets to the groomer. So I am going to share with you a few tips to help you know what to ask for to get the look that you want. But first, let's talk about your dogs. One of the best ways to get the results that you are looking for is to make sure that your dog is prepared for the groomer. Dogs should be professionally groomed at least every four to six weeks. Dogs who are regularly groomed see the process as part of their routine. Dogs who are not regularly groomed see the procedures as punishment. This attitude from the dog often limits how much the groomer can achieve. Make sure that your dog doesn't have any mats or tangles in its hair. Matted hair greatly limits the styles available for your dog. Make sure that your dog is trained for the grooming process. I will have some tips at the end of this video. So now let's talk about giving the groomer instructions. The first thing is to make sure that the entire family is in agreement before your appointment. Many times there are disputes in the waiting room during the intake amongst family members concerning the length of the dog's hair. Perhaps the easiest way to determine the desired length of the dog's coat is to look at a roller. Do you want one half inch, one inch, or three inches left on the dog? In my blog that accompanies this video, I have detailed instructions for several haircuts that my clients consider puppy trims. If you like these looks, you can simply download or screenshot the image with the instructions for your groomer. Ease of maintenance and lifestyle should also be considered. Dogs with one inch of hair can be brushed weekly. Dogs with two inches of hair twice a week and dogs with three inches or more of hair should be brushed daily. Be realistic of how much time you can spare for grooming your dog. While puppies have short rounded heads with short rounded mustaches, you may want a top knot, a ponytail, or more of a beard. So instead of asking for a general term like a puppy cut, sit down and look at images and consider each part of your dog's body. Look at images of dogs like yours who are freshly groomed and print out one or two of your favorites. Plan the length that you want for the trunk of the body, the ears, the tail, the head, and the legs. Write it down and be prepared. This way you can get the best out of your pet's grooming experience. This dog is hand scissored to a three inch long trim all over. She is trimmed close around the eyes with a soft flowing top knot and bangs. The ears and tail are left natural. This dog requires a lot of maintenance almost as much as a full long coat. This dog has about one and a half inches of coat on the body and legs, trimmed closely around the eyes with bangs and a rounded face. The ears and tail are left long and natural. This dog is trimmed to about one half inch on the trunk of the body. The legs are kept at one to one and a half inches. The eye area is trimmed close with bangs and a rounded face. The ears are trimmed to a medium length and the tail is kept natural. This dog has one inch of coat on the trunk of the body, one to two inches on the legs and a rounded face. The ears are trimmed to one inch past the ear penna with a long tail. One of the things that you should consider is ear length. There are many styles for the ears. Your dog's natural ear set will be a determining factor. Puppies have tapered ears. When I think of a puppy look, I think of tapered ears. The tail styles are long, terrier carrot shaped, flag, sword shaped, short, or pom pom. The leg styles are cylinder, flared, and short. The face styles are fusion, rounded, westy, natural with bangs, medium length beard, and clean. The foot styles are rounded foot, clean feet, and beveled foot. So what is a puppy trim? Technically, it is a trim reserved only for the show poodle puppy. These are the same poodle at different ages in the puppy trim. This is my poodle ammo at 15 weeks, at seven months, and at 11 months. 
So you can see the trim looks different as the puppy ages. In conclusion, the best way to get the look that you want is to make a list of what you want on each area of the dog's body. Giving the groomer the length that you desire will leave no guesswork on the groomer's part. If the groomer is sure of your directions, they can do their job efficiently without stress. Don't leave it up to the professional to decide for you unless they state that due to the condition of the dog or the behavior of the dog, they don't have an option. So now let's talk about making sure that your dog is prepared for the grooming. Remember, it is your responsibility to train your dog for grooming. It is very difficult for the groomer to effectively train your dog to readily accept the grooming procedures. While most groomers are indeed excellent trainers, we spend the entire time with your dog grooming the dog, so we are not as effective as we would be if we were simply training alone. And keep in mind, we are not being paid to train the dog, we are being paid to groom the dog. Puppies should start learning to be groomed as soon as they come to live with you. However, it's never too late to start training. Whether you plan to have a professional groomer or not, it's important to start the training at home. Gently brushing your dog every day will train your dog for the grooming process. Remember that puppies may be teething. Be careful how you hold the head. I use my hand in a C shape on the head. If your puppy doesn't accept this, you can train the dog to allow you to do this by separating the action from the grooming and simply train the hold. I do this by having the dog's favorite treats close by. Paw mats are great for keeping the surface comfortable. Then by putting my hand in a C shape, I place my hand on the dog's head, then pop a treat in the dog's mouth. After a few weeks of doing this three times a day, I will add putting a little pressure and sliding the skin back, tightening the loose skin over the eyes. This is important as the dog must have the head held to trim the face. Be sure to lavish praise on the dog when finished, regardless of how the dog accepts the process. Another way to train your dog for grooming is to gently file the dog's nails daily with a salon board. I start with just one or two toes a day. Using the 180 grit side of a 180 100 grit file. Again, do this on a non-slip surface like a grooming table with the puppy properly secured. Ignore the screaming, flailing, and pulling if the puppy does this because you know that the nail file does not hurt him. Praise the slightest attempt by the dog for calm. Pop a favorite soft treat into the dog's mouth. Lavish him with praise and play with him. Do one or two nails a day for a few weeks. Then move on to doing the whole foot. And keep working until you can do all four feet in one sitting without a fuss. Trust me, you will get there. See my styling blogs at GroomingSafer.com and my dog grooming playlists on YouTube where you can see many of the styles that you see here performed. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss my next upload. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.